What's going on, family? This is Scrapbook Boxing, the Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. Right now, we're going to start the light heavyweight boxing series. We're going to start with the champions. Now, we've already covered Battling Siki the other day. And I did touch on Archie Moore, but I will be covering him a little bit more. I don't think I did enough justice to Archie Moore. But we're going to take a look at a century of light heavyweight champions. The question is, who will be the first light heavyweight we cover? We did battle in Siki. So let's take a look at the next light heavyweight champion that we cover today. Let's take a look at the Orchard Man, George Carpentier. George Carpentier started out as a small fighter. He worked his way up to the middleweight division when he challenged Frank Klaus for the title. Then he moved up to light heavyweight. And he gained the light heavyweight championship and then moved up to heavyweight as a light heavyweight and challenged Jack Dempsey. He challenged many fighters, including Gene Tunney. So let's take a look at George Carpentier's career. The Orchard Man, George Carpentier, was born January 12th, 1894 at Lens, France. He weighed 175 pounds and stood 5 foot 11 and a half inches. Carpentier, known as the Orchid Man, started his professional career in 1907 and retired in 1926. In 1912, he lost on a foul in 19 rounds to Frank Klaus and about advertised as for the middleweight title. In his first American fight, he defeated Battling Levinsky on October 12, 1920 in Jersey City, New Jersey on a four-round knockout to win the light heavyweight championship. In his next start at Boyle's 30 Acres, Jersey City, New Jersey, for the heavyweight title, he was stopped in four rounds by Jack Dempsey in the first million dollar game. Carpentier lost his title, his light heavyweight championship, to battling Siki by a knockout in the sixth round. On September 24th, 1922, at Paris, France. Now, the Orchard Man served in the French Army in World War I as a lieutenant in the Aviation Corps. He fought in every division from flyweight through heavyweight. George Carpentier was some fighter. Let's look further. A complete list of men elected into the Boxing Hall of Fame in 1964. The pioneer group was Sam Collier Lightweight. The old timers group was George Carpentier light heavyweight, and Ted Kitt Lewis, welterweight. The modern group that year was Lou Ambers, lightweight champion, James J. Braddock, heavyweight champion. Now, James J. Braddock lost his title in 1937 to the Brown Bomber Joe Lewis, and Lou Ambers lost his lightweight title to Hammer and Henry Armstrong. In 1907, February 24th, he won his first four-round bout. September 11th, he lost his first four-round bout. 1908, November 1st, Ed Solomon, he won on a foul in 13. November 30th, Ed Solomon, he KO'd by in 18. So he was stopped by the same fighter that he lost on a foul on in 18 rounds. And this continued, he would win, he would draw, 1909, February 19th, he would face George Gloria in Paris, and he was stopped in six rounds. February 25th, he would face Simon Paris and defeat him in ten rounds. February 28th, Charles Legrand 
that would be a 20 round draw and this would continue all throughout 1909 1910 January 5th Young Warner in Paris he would win on a foul in 7 rounds George Gillard July, uh, January 8th he would win in 10 rounds and he would get a couple of KOs and then March 12th, Buck Shine in Brussels, he would lose in 10 rounds. He would get knocked out by Young Snowball in Paris, April 9th. He got KO'd in four rounds. He would get KO'd again in eight rounds by Fernand Cooney. This was August 13th. This would continue. 1911. January 8th, Ed Brochett, Lenz, he would KO him in seven rounds. January 14th, George Rendell, Paris, he would KO him in five rounds. January 27th, Henry Pite, in Paris, he would lose to him in ten rounds. February 17th, Jack Daniels, it's a very good drink by the way, in Paris, he would win in 10 rounds. March 1st, Young Napper in Paris. He would defeat him in 8 rounds. And this would continue throughout his career. He had an astonishing career. All through a march, he got chaos, get a couple of victories. 6th stat, April 1st, 10 round victory. March 25th, Jack Meekins in Paris, he would get a 10-round victory. And this would continue. Now, June 15th, he killed a man in 16 rounds to win the welterweight championship of France. August 29th, Dixie Kidd. He was knocked out by Dixie Kidd in five rounds. October 23rd, Young Joseph in London. He killed him in 10 rounds. December 13th, Harry Lewis in Paris. He would defeat him in 20 rounds. 1912, he would continue. He would lose two fights. June 24th, Frank Klaus. He lost on a foul in 19 rounds. That was for the middleweight crown. We talked about that. October 23rd, Billy Papke. In Paris, he lost on a foul 17 rounds. Bill Papke would be champion. He would face Stanley Ketchel. I'm just double checking something here as I'm thinking at the same time. Okay, right, I got it correct. 1913, January 10, Marcel Mouos. And Paris, he would defeat him in eight rounds. Now, Cyclone Smith was a very good fighter, March 1st. Killed him in three rounds. George Gunther, another good fighter, March 17th. Killed him in 14 rounds. October 11th, Jeff Smith in Paris. Defeat him in 20 rounds. Now, December 8th, Boiler um, Bomb Barty, I don't know why I can't pronounce his name. Uh, well, his name is Billy Wells in London. Killed him in uh, one round. George Compontier discipline for alleged poor work. So I don't believe he got paid that fight. 1914, Pat O'Keefe killed him in second round. That was January 19th. July 16th, Gumbo Smith from London. He lost in a foul in six. Claimed the white heavyweight title. So they had a white heavyweight title. 1915-1916, Kid Jackson defeated on a foul. So he won on a foul in four rounds against Kid Jackson. Nineteen twenty-one, July second, Jack Dempsey, Jersey City. Jack Dempsey stopped him in four rounds. That was for the World Heavyweight Championship. 
Now, Harry Wells was around at that time, but he chose a light heavyweight champion to do uh, to defend his title against. I'm talking about Jack Dempsey. Nineteen twenty two, January twenty second, George Cook killed him in four rounds. Ted Kitt Lewis, May eleventh, killed him in one round. September twenty fourth, battling Siki. He was KO'd by in six rounds and lost his world light heavyweight title. He would continue to fight. He was knocked out by Gene Tunney July twenty fourth in New York City. He was stopped in fifteen rounds. 1927, January 11th, he had one fight, Jack Walker in Paris. That was an exhibition, four rounds. So total bouts for George Compontier was 106. He killed 51 opponents. He defeated 30. So basically just on a, on a decision. He lost on a 5-1, lost on a decision 6, 5 draws. No contest won. Uh, no decision, I'm sorry, won and no contest none. He was elected to the Boxing Hall of Fame in 1964. So George Carpentier, outstanding light heavyweight champion. And he challenged Jack, Johns, Jack Dempsey, Gene Tunney, Frank Klaus, Balan Siki. Great job by George Carpentier. Now let's take a look at George Carpentier, a few fights. My complete Police Gazette scrapbook. Let's take a look. All right, here we have Gene Tunney and George Carpentier. You have Gene Tunney standing over George Carpentier. He's in some kind of fetal position stretched out. He's trying to get up. You have George Carpentier on the scales. Gene Tunney looking over. See what his weight is. George Compantier to your right, Gene Tunney to your left. Actually, you have Gene Tunney to your right and George Compantier to your left. Let me make that correction. Gene Tunney to the left, George Compantier to your right, trying to get himself together. Apparently, he got touched a little bit. Photographic highlights of Tunney victory over Carpentier. I like to look at these. George Carpentier was taking account. Let me see. First knockdown in the tenth round. George Carpentier taking account of nine. Andy Griffin was the referee. So I like all this little information. That's just me. Carpentier down in 14. And what I like about these books that I have here, and I didn't even notice it until after, you know, my dad and I put them together, is that they pretty much give you all the details. The referee, where the fight was hit, end of the fight, go through the rounds. There's a lot of good information in, uh, in these books here. That was put together by my dad and I. Tony stops Carpentier in 15 rounds. Frenchman's claim of foul is ignored. So George Carpentier was claiming a foul by Gene Tony. George is floored three times by Gene in 10th, left to solar plexus in 14 in deciding blow. Now that's George Carpentier and Gene Tunney. 
Let's move on. Here you have the Orchid Man. He licks Joe Beckett. And it's coming over. Joe Beckett was a very good heavyweight at that time. Brain stopped a few seconds. George again, confident. We'll meet, we'll meet one of our light heavyweights. So this is going on in Europe. One down, one cigar. Two down, two cigars. Three down, get the entire box. <laughs> Over Joe Beckett's English. Here you have George Carpentier. George obliges a Bobby. So basically he's giving an autograph. Carpentier signing his autograph for London policeman on duty at the dressing room door. Here you have George Carpentier standing over Joe Beckett. Carpentier knocks out Beckett. George makes short work of Joe in London bout. British down on the floor for good in the first round. So Carpentier scored a first round knockout. You see Carpentier knocks out Niles, but shows little of his old form. George wins French heavyweight title. Is close to defeat himself. Under body, bomb bomb net in the second round. So George Compantier almost got knocked out himself. Compantier knocks out Marcel Niles. It's George Compantier standing over Niles. George Compantier doing some kind of a shoulder roll against Nile. And here you have George Compantier with a German Shepherd of some kind. George Compantier as a soldier. All right, let's take a look at another fight. Here you have George Carpentier with Jack Dempsey. Jack Dempsey to your right, George Carpentier to your left. Dempsey with his back to you, George Carpentier facing you. Got Jack Dempsey sitting down in between rounds. Dempsey to your right, Compantier staggering to his left. You got Jack Dempsey to your right, George Compantier to your left. Compantier to your right, and Dempsey to the left. Dempsey drops Compantier in the fourth round of a great title match. The fighters shake hands, Carpentier, referee, J. Harry, Ertel, Jack Dempsey, mixing it in when the opening rounds, George slips through the ropes in the first round, and Jack's corner after the first, Dempsey blocking Carpentier's, his left, the great second round, Compantier makes Jack cover up. Let's continue with this fight. Here, Jack Dempsey parrying George Compantier's left jab. Dempsey to the right, Compantier to the left.
Dempsey to the right, Compontier to the left. And this fight only went four rounds. So you can see Compontier getting ready to go down. Now, he went down like once right before that. I don't know if it was a slip. But they were counting up to like five. He got up. It looked like he was sleeping at the time. He just jumped up. They got tagged again and he was out. So Jack Dempsey is a victor over George Compontier. George Compontier being aided. These pictures snap at ringside tell the story of French Idol's defeat. The third round, Compontier misses the left. The Frenchman uses footwork to keep out of Dempsey's range. Compontier weakening as Dempsey follows him to ropes. First knockdown in the fatal fourth. The second knockdown, uh, knockout. Ertel, who was the referee, tolling count of 10. Dempsey and Ertel pick up the fallen Frenchman. So that's what's going on here. All right, so that's George Compontier. Covered him for the light heavyweight series. We're going to cover one more fighter. Look out for that next fighter. This is Scrapbook Boxing. Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff series. Look out for the next fighter coming up. So the next fighter we're covering is Jack O'Brien.